So let's talk about the commons. The commons is that wealth which properly belongs to all. It is, first, uh, that natural wealth that we inherit, including land, water, air, forests, ecosystems. It is also that wealth that we produce together. It is culture, ideas, care, safety, education, and community. The commons is typically contrasted with private property, with the idea that of property being the norm and the commons being whatever uh, is not captured by property. But we should really think of the other way around. The commons is what is fundamental prior to any appropriation from it. Even the private use of the commons does not render it property. Use of fruct is when something is used for a period of time and then returned when one is no longer using it, such as a library book. Only when uh, private use turns into exclu exclusive control, including the right to transfer and dictate its use, does usufruct become property. Under the first empires, the commons was appropriated not so much as private property, but as the property of the sovereign. The king, pharaoh, em or emperor owned the land outright and could subdivide it among their patrons as they pleased. Traditional subsistence economies were broken up and directed toward the state through grain monoculture that could be, uh, readily be surveyed and taxed. Soldiers conquered territory and demanded tribute. The coins demanded as tributes circulated as currency, and thus the first markets were born. The village commons had to be sabotaged to create the structure of empire. A bureaucratic state apparatus was, in, was instituted to administer this system of exploitation and created class stratification so that those closer to power were, uh, were loyal to those above them in order to suppress those below them. From the beginning, state power required enforcers, and the first regimented standing armies were formed to uphold it. Different forms of, of power developed over the course of human history, always involving some way of sabotaging and appropriating the commons. With capitalism, power became commodified as capital. There are multiple competing definitions of capital, with uh, distinctions between fixed and variable capital, or real and financial capital, but it's best understood in terms of a process called capitalization. Capitalization is the discounting of present value for expected future value. In other words, it's a bet. Now, in gambling, there are uh, games of chance and games of strategy, but generally you're dealing with constrained circumstances. With capital, however, uh, one is making bets while also attempting to change the game in order to make them pay off. It is as if the gamblers uh, themselves owned the casino and continued to change the rules in order to increase their own share of it. Except, of course, the casino is our whole society, and it's progressively becoming more and more of a casino. It is a game continuously stacking itself in favor of its winners. The history of capitalism is the history of innovations in stacking the game, uh, adapting itself to stay ahead of its competitors. One of the first innovations in, uh, involved ex expropriating land and natural resources, a, proce a process Marx referred to as primitive accumulation. Uh, peasants dispossessed of their land would have nothing to sell but their labor, becoming the industrial proletariat. The factories uh, they worked at uh, would subdivide the, the production process into a series of repetitive mechanical tasks that, uh, that would make the workers as, re as replaceable as any moving parts. It was in the industrial factory system uh, that the commodity form arose, and with it the value uh, on which Marx bases labor theory of value. Uh, there's a great deal of confusion about the labor theory of value on the part of both its proponents and its detractors. It needs to be understood that, uh, that the value it refers to is the socially produced value under commodity production. It is a form of value particular to the capitalist mode of production. Capitalist detractors tend to criticize it, uh, but fail to understand that this value refers uh, to socially necessary labor and is not identical with price. For socials, however, there can be confusion about the nature of exploitation, which is often understood simply as the capitalist appropriating the surplus value of the worker, effectively working like a private tax on the worker's productivity. This is not entirely inaccurate, uh, but misses a much larger point. It leads to the misconception that there is something corresponding to the full value of one's labor uh, that one would receive if only the capitalist wasn't skimming from the top. The real exploitation lies in the commodification of one's labor to begin with. It is a form of enclosure, reducing the commons uh, to an exchange value that can be manipulated and, and gambled with. It is, in other words, the capitalization of labor. Thorstein Veblen uh, distinguished between industry and business. Industry is a collective endeavor. Even if you're a craftsman working alone, you're drawing on a vast uh, collective knowledge passed down from others. In other words, industry is a form of commons. Business, on the other hand, is involved in pecuniary distribution, 
for which it relies on sabotaging industry, or more broadly, sabotaging the commons. The enclosure of land and development of industrial uh, production were among the early forms of sabotage involved in the creation of capitalism, but they weren't the only ones. Capitalism emerged out of colonialism, uh, which involved the export of the enclosure movement through, con through the conquest and privatization of indigenous land, the, the extraction of natural resources, the replacement of indigenous farming techniques with export-driven monoculture, and the imposition of a Western uh, uh, nation-state model onto conquered territories. But in order to justify that, they, had, uh, they also created a new hierarchical social order known as race. Europeans, seeing the darker complexion of the conquered, invented the, uh, the concept of whiteness, by which their position as conquerors was legitimated as the natural order of things. Stratification along the lines of class, race, and gender uh, gave people assigned roles within society and gave people an incentive to uphold uh, their status against the gains of those below them, even if they were of low social stature themselves. Social norms emerge that teach people how to accept how it is acceptable to treat others, and the standard for doing so is how they are normally treated. Thus, for example, if homeless people are treated with disdain and derision by others, it becomes acceptable to do the same. The way people are treated is normalized to such an extent that losing one's privilege over others is seen as oppression and tyranny, while those uh, lower than oneself asking for equality is treated as, uh, as a chaotic and dangerous element. One major debate on the left is between intersectionality and class reductionism, with the former seeing class as one axis of oppression, uh, while, mi uh, while uh, the latter see class as primary, with other oppressions being part of the superstructure. But the problem with class reductionism is not that they reduce everything to class, but that they have too reductive an understanding of class. All axes of oppression are ways that people are classed in society. They all determine one's social role and position in the pecking order. The fallacy lies in in seeing the economy as a, as a separate sphere from other social relations. This leads us to miss the fact that inequalities of power are not, are not separate from economic inequality. Profit itself is merely quantified social power. As inequality has grown, we have seen an expansion of the carceral state. While other social services are cut and privatized, police budgets have ballooned in scope. The first police forces emerged with the rise of capitalism. The medieval world had the Shire Reeve, from which we get the word sheriff, as someone responsible for collecting taxes and enforcing the king's uh, orders. But the first organized police forces were created not for prosecuting crimes so much as crowd control. From the peasant uprisings of the 14th century to the anti-enclosure riots of the next, next few centuries to slave uprisings and labor, labor strikes of industrial capitalism, police have always been in the job of suppressing dissent. This is the role around which uh, left-wing analysis of police have generally centered. However, overt dis uh, dissent is not the only subject of police repression. The growth of policing has not exactly followed a comparable growth of protests, but it has tracked growth in inequality. Under the, under the neoliberal uh, system that has grown since the 70s, we have seen industry, out industry outsourced to the global south, replaced by service work and meaningless bureaucratic work. Wages have stagnated as rent has grown. As factories are shipped overseas, the city itself has become a factory for generating rent. Hedge funds and private equity firms buy up real estate en masse to keep rents up. Developers partner with city governments to undertake gentrifying urban renewal projects that, dis that di displace existing residents to make way for higher earning residents. When places have been targeted for gentrification, policing has increased, uh, looking for people who, uh, who seem like they don't belong so they can be surveilled and arrested. Residents are priced out of the rental market, uh, uh, and uh, the violent process of ev eviction takes place. Uh, some, fi some find fatigue rent elsewhere, but the unlucky ones are forced onto the streets. Now, becoming homeless is an, is an injury on several levels. It is not only a loss of shelter, of access to basic amenities, and exposure to the elements. It is not only a constant source of stress, with city noises, lack of sleep, and vulnerability to violence making for a high-stress environment that exacerbates mental health issues. It also marks you as an outsider to society. No longer fully human, but a nuisance to be managed and swept away. In fact, the police response to homeless encampments, the state-sponsored uh, armed robbery of, the, of this vulnerable population, is euphemistically referred to as sweeps. Homeless people account for up to half of all arrests, and this is not at all an indication of, the da of any danger they, they pose. In fact, uh, it, is, it is rather uh, because their entire existence has been, has been criminalized. Incarcerating people is far more expensive than simply housing them. 
For a system that presents itself as maximally efficient, capitalism can be incredibly wasteful. In fact, its wastefulness is, is precisely the point. Recall we began this video talking about the commons. Economists have their own words for the commons, externality. An externality is when an interaction between two parties has some effect on an external party. There are positive externalities such as education and negative externalities such as pollution. The goal of the capitalist is to capture positive externalities while pushing negative externalities onto others. The neoliberal state has taken up the task of, of picking up these negative externalities, particularly the surplus population discarded by this system. It enforces racial hierarchies and, pedera and heteropatriarchal gender norms. Socialists have long recognized uh, the state as, as the instrument of class society, but it's often presented as if they simply upheld the underlying, social, uh, the underlying structure of property relations to allow for capital accum accumulation. However, we get a bigger picture if we, under if we overcome the ideological separation of economy and society. The social inequalities of race, gender, sexuality, and so on are not separate from class stratification. They are part of a single multifaceted system of stratification by which power is accumulated. Capital is commodified power, and capitalists compete with one another uh, for relative position within this hierarchy. They use systems of social stratification to, uh, to restrict others from rising up to their position while competing with one another for the top spot. The process of capital accumulation has more to do with uh, reproduction of social relations than material production. To put it succinctly, capital accumulation simply is the reproduction of social inequality and little else. In this respect, the police don't simply guard the capitalist property. By violently enforcing social hierarchies, they play an active role in the process of capital accumulation. State violence, economic exploitation, and structural inequality are all parts of a single movement. Police don't, police don't invent uh, the, the, the prevailing social prejudices, but they carry them out with violence and impunity. The capitalist pursuit of growth and profit and the state's uh, violent carceral apparatus are inextricably linked. The carceral state is the clenched fist of the invisible hand. It is a weapon by which the commons is robbed from us, and in reclaiming the commons, we must democratize the security apparatus as well. We must reject the carceral logic by which people are disposed of when we find them inconvenient, and instead seek to address the unmet needs that leave people desperate in the first place. The use of force in upholding security may not be abolished altogether, but it can be democratized and made accountable directly to the people rather than to the carceral state. All states are founded on violence. The carceral state in particular has its origin in capitalism and has grown in proportion to, that, uh, to the vast inequality and class stratification it has wrought. To defeat capitalism, we must abolish the carceral state and restore the commons.